Hey there, what is up you guys? I am Jerry Lai and welcome back to my sports photography channel. For those of you joining me for the very first time, I currently serve as the Director of Content and Photography at USA Today Sports and I have been a professional photographer and photo editor for the past 16 years. My goal for this channel is to help you become a better sports photographer. And specifically for today, I want to help you become a better baseball photographer by discussing the common photo positions that you'll find in a baseball field and discussing the pros and cons of each. Now for this video, I'm only going to be discussing specific field level photo positions. If you are curious about elevated spots, I did a video on why you should consider photographing from above. I'll leave a video card above. Anyways, back to today's topic. Here's a diagram of an ordinary baseball diamond. The five most common locations to shoot from are as follows. Behind home plate. Then there are two positions along the first base side. I'll call them outside first, as in on the outfield side of the dugout, and inside first base, on the infield side of the dugout. And of course, there are two positions along the third base side, outside third base and inside third base. At the college and professional level, you'll likely find clearly marked photo positions. Now, the locations of these may shift slightly from ballpark to ballpark, but in general, these are what you'll find. Some may have all of them, others may just have a combo of what I just showed you above. But overall, that's a good general overview of what you'll likely find in most baseball parks. So now that you know the common locations available at most ballparks, Let's discuss the pros and cons of each location, starting from my least favorite to my most preferred. The first photo position that I want to talk about is the one located directly behind home plate. This is also probably the least common still photography position. And in fact, I've only seen one major league ballpark that makes this position available to photographers. And even then, you need special permission to be there. However, at the little league or high school level, you likely can just wander on back there and stand and shoot behind the fence. All that said, this position is really useful for one shot in particular, and that's staring straight down the gun barrel and facing down the pitcher. You can get them in their entire windup, and if you have ever wondered what a 95 mile per hour fastball looks like, you'll find out. So yeah, from this spot, it's a really sweet position to photograph the pitcher, but that is really about all you're gonna get from back there. Sure, you could get pretty creative and layer the batter into the frame, but trying to get any action on the bases is sort of futile. It's really hard attraction to the left and to the right because of the fence and the netting that's in the way. It'll throw off and distort your focus. Additionally, you'll only be able to photograph the backs of the batters. So in reality, you'll probably only be back behind the plate for about an inning to get both starting pitchers, and then you'll move on. The next photo spot that I want to talk about is the inside third base photo spot. I think this is a very nice, well-rounded spot to shoot from. From here, you do get a pretty good look at the pitcher. You'll get really nice face and good expressions, no matter if they're a righty or a lefty. You'll also have a great view of all the action in the infield, no matter what base and which way the play goes. However, there is one major flaw with this photo position, which is why I rank it lower than the other positions that I've yet to talk about. And that is, it's not the greatest for photographing batters. Now think about why. No matter if the batter is righty or lefty, once the ball is put in play, they run up the first baseline. So what happens? Well, they begin to turn away from you, so you can't really see their faces. If you remember from my three golden rules video, we want to try to see faces in our sports photos. Now you'll also remember that's not really a hard and fast rule. And as you saw from those two samples, they will likely work for whoever you're shooting. It's just not my preferred look when there are other locations to capture batter action. So what are those locations? Answer, outside third base. So what makes outside third a better spot to shoot batters than inside third? Well, notice that from here, the right-handed batters do still have their bodies turned away from you. 
However, just because of the angle you're shooting from, you could at least get a side view of their face and their eyes at a profile when they're in their stance, or of course when they follow through on their swing. You'll also have no problem with the left-handers, as they'll already be facing you. So as you can see, no matter the handedness of the batter, you'll be able to get a nice photo of everybody from outside third. Now in addition, this spot is also great for action out on the field. Since you generally won't have a net or a fence in the way, you'll have good range of motion as you go left to right, and thus be able to capture the action anywhere, from in the outfield to any of the four bases. You can also get fantastic celebrations at home plate from this location. But that's not all. Another great thing about outside third is that it will give you the very classic horizontal picture photo. This is a go-to photo that you'll see in just about every photo report from a ball game. It features both arms extended and loaded with ball in hand. However, there is a catch because this photo only works for right-handed pitchers from the third base side. If you have a lefty, you're only going to get their backs. Now, of course, you could work around this by getting them just in their stance or in their follow through. But I think you'll admit that neither of those types of photos are nearly as interesting as the classic arms loaded photo. So if you want to get a good action shot of a left-handed pitcher, you're going to have to change locations and possibly go to the other side of the field. Okay, so now we've crossed on over to the opposite side of the field and have found ourselves in the outside first base photo position. And the outside first base spot is an extremely well-rounded photo position. Just like the third base side, you will be able to see the entire diamond and outfield and get plays at every base. It is particularly good for double plays at second because the throw is usually going to be coming more or less at you. You'll be able to photograph all batters no matter what handedness they are. You'll get good face on the lefties when they follow through and get all the righties because they're already facing you. You'll also get great celebration photos as players score runs and cross the plate. Okay, so that sounds great, but what about the pitchers? Don't you have the opposite problem of the outside third base side and have the right-handed pitchers facing away from you? Well, yes, it is true that only the lefties will extend and open up to you. But here's the nice thing about being on the first base side. If a right-handed pitcher fields a bunt or has to make a pickoff throw to first base, guess what? They're looking right at you. So problem solved. And because of all the reasons above, that's why the outside first photo position is one of my most preferred spots when shooting baseball. But there is one photo position I have yet to discuss that is probably my most preferred location when it's available. So now we've arrived at our fifth and final field level photo position, the inside first base photo well. This spot has all of the advantages of the outside first base spot. You have full vision of the field and can get plays at every base. It doesn't matter if you have a right-handed batter or left-handed batter, as you'll be able to see their faces as they run up the first baseline. It also doesn't matter if you have a righty or a lefty pitcher, you're going to get their faces every time. You no longer have to cross your fingers and hope for a bunt or a pickoff play. So because this position is so versatile, it's no surprise that at least at the professional level, the inside first base spot tends to be the most popular. For those of you shooting editorially, it's a great spot that allows you to see all the action on the field, yet also allows you to photograph every batter that you need when they come up to bat. Now all that said, your choice of photo positions, if you have a choice of course, is going to be dependent on a number of factors. First and most importantly, who are you shooting for? If you're shooting for a specific team or a specific market, that may dictate the side of the field that you're going to be on. Now, as you've just seen above, I do prefer being on the first base side, but if the team that I need to shoot for occupies the third base dugout, it's probably better to be over there. For example, if I'm shooting at the White Sox ballpark, and if hypothetically I were shooting for the White Sox, it would be beneficial for me to usually be on their dugout side, which is on the third base side, so that I could get them coming back in and celebrating with their teammates in the dugout. 
or perhaps you're on assignment to get a specific player or a specific look. You may have to pick one side of the field versus another so that they could be facing you in most situations. Now, on the other hand, you may have multiple things that you're trying to photograph during a ball game, and one spot isn't going to do the job for you. You're gonna to have to move around from spot to spot. And this may be because you have different players that you need to get, or you're trying to adapt to different conditions and game scenarios on the field based on who's winning, who's performing well, et cetera, et cetera. My point is this, the best baseball position to shoot from is the location where you could fulfill your shot list and make your clients and parents happy. Anyways, let me know in the comments section below what your favorite spot to shoot from is. Do you agree with my assessment on what the best photo positions are? Are there any other locations in your home ballpark that you could shoot from that I didn't touch on? I'd be curious to know. Anyways, thank you very much as always for watching this video today. If you enjoyed the content on this video or this channel, hit that like button and consider subscribing. To all of you out there, stay safe and I will see you all again next time. Play ball.